Now, as you're watching this video, there are about 4.33 billion internet users in the world. That represents about 57% of the total human population on this planet right now. And out of these people, um, about 51% of you are accessing the internet through your mobile devices. There are about 1.7 billion websites on the internet right now. And uh, the average person spends about six and a half hours uh, on the internet each day. All this happened uh, within a mere short 28 years. It was only in 1991 that the internet was available to the public. Now, in these 28 years, uh, society has gone through a major shift in uh, habits and uh, practices. Uh, for example, today we spend more time shopping online, uh, we learn a lot of things online, and we get our entertainment online. Netflix, anyone? And heck, you are even listening to a story through this channel right now. In fact, uh, this kind of uh, societal changes has happened quite a few times throughout history. It happened when the newspapers became popular and uh, the magazines became popular and before that, uh, there was a proliferation of books. At the core of all these changes was actually just a simple upgrade or evolution of the platform upon which information is being disseminated to the public. It is a change or an upgrade in the way that uh, ideas and thoughts are communicated to people or among people. Now think about it, if just a simple evolution or an upgrade of a platform could cause such a great societal changes, how big an impact would it have been when humans transitioned from a time where there was no written word to a time where there was a way to record down your thoughts and events around you uh, with symbols on some kind of a surface. Hello and welcome to the Chain Smoking Writers channel, where we share the myths, legends and histories of the Chinese people, from the first creation myth to the last imperial dynasty. More than 6,000 years of stories, one video at a time. So if you like content and stories like this, remember to like and subscribe to the channel so you will be updated whenever a new video drops. Now, the protagonist of today's story is a man named Chang Jie. Uh, he was a chief documenter or you could say historian in the service of Huang Di and the Huaxia court. Now, his main job, apart from remembering the important events that happened during Huang Ti's rule, was to keep an account of the numbers of the livestock and the uh, food reserves they held. He was a hardworking man with a good memory and he did his job exceptionally well. But with the daily movements of livestock and food reserves and all the transactions that were going on, uh, even his prodigious uh, memory could not keep up with everything that was going on. Now this caused endless distress to him and he was desperate to find a solution to the problem. So at first he used a method of tying knots in uh, strings or ropes to remember things. And this was a method that was passed down by Sui Ren, the fire starter. And you could find a link to that video up here. He used different colors to represent the different items that he was tracking. And it worked for a while, but over time, as the population started growing and the uh, items he needed to keep track all started uh, growing as well. Uh, it became more and more tedious and inefficient. So he then came up with um, tying loops in the strings and uh, filling those loops with different kinds of shells and rocks to represent the different items that he was uh, tracking. So when the number depleted, he would remove a shell. When uh, the numbers increased, he would add the shell back. This was a faster and more efficient way of uh, keeping track of things and doing basic accounting, I guess. So when Huang Ti found out that uh, Chang Jie was doing a good job of it and he was very efficient at what he was doing, uh, what do you think happened? Yeah, Huang Ti gave him more to do. What's new, right? You're good at your job, your boss knows about it. What does your boss do? Give you more things to do. So now, um, on top of everything that he was doing, Chang Jie was also responsible for uh, recording the frequency of worships and sacrifices, the distribution of a uh, game from hunting trips and um, you know harvest, uh, the distribution of uh, food reserves, and even the population count of all the various tribes and clans that were under Huang Ti's rule. 
Now with so much more complexities and variables coming in and out of the numbers, the string and shell method is proving to be woefully inadequate at uh, doing the job and there was no way to keep an accurate and updated uh, accounting of all the numbers that was like, you know, coming in and out. And Chang Che was literally drowning in a sea of numbers by this time. I mean, he was consistently tired and constantly stressed out, you know, trying to keep up with all the changing numbers. It was a hole that was just getting deeper and deeper and he had no way of digging himself out of it. So one day on a hunting trip with uh, three elderly hunters, the party came to a three-way fork in the trails and the first old hunter uh, insisted that they should go east because uh, there were two antelopes there. And the second hunter uh, argued that they should go north because there was a, a, a herd of deers down, down that direction. And the third hunter insisted that they should go west because there were two tigers there, you know. What's more manly than capturing two tigers and bringing it back to the tribe, right? So Chang Jie being, uh, being quite surprised actually, he asked the hunters, how do you know what's uh, in each direction? How do you know there were deers here and tigers there and antelopes there? And the hunters told him, well, they could tell what was uh, further down the trail just by looking at the paw prints that were left behind uh, on the ground. Chang Jie had an epiphany at this point. A, a light bulb just went off uh, in his head. And in, in his mind was the idea that if a set of footprints could uh, represent a kind of animal, the type of animal, a symbol can represent a, an item that he's trying to keep track of and he was trying to record. So once he got home, he buried himself in work, uh, creating all kinds of symbols for everything that he was recording and accounting for. And uh, it, it took some time, but in a relatively short period, he was able to uh, get all the accounts he was in charge of. He was able to get the accounts of the land in order in a relatively simple and painless way. No more tying knots, no more putting shells, no more trying to remember all the numbers. So when Huang Di found out uh, about what Chang Jie had done and what Chang Jie had uh, invented, he was greatly pleased and um, he relieved Chang Jie of his duties. Yeah, great. I finally figured out how to do my job and you fired me from my job. But of course, Huang Di did not really just fire Chang Jie from his job. Uh, what happened was that uh, Huang Di ordered Chang Jie to focus on one thing and one thing only and that was to create symbols and characters for all the things in the land and to teach them to the people so that the people could have a way of recording what they see and what they taught. So now with no other distractions, no numbers to worry about, uh, Chang Jie could focus on uh, creating characters and symbols and he quickly created a great number of uh, symbols and characters to represent you know a lot of the things that he see around him but he soon uh, ran into another problem um, and that was with so many characters and so many symbols where can he write them on so while Chang Jie was uh, pondering upon this problem uh, one day a man caught a turtle from the stream you know and he brought it to Chang Jie to create a character for it. And of course, Chang Jie made, made a word for it uh, based on his uh, tail and the uh, pattern on the shell. And I guess for a laugh, he decided to carve the character on the turtle itself. Hey, that's most probably like the earliest label maker in history. Now the turtle quickly uh, escaped and scuttled back into the river. Three years later, another man, another person caught this same turtle from uh, somewhere else uh, along the river and it was surprised that there was writing on the shell and not only did the carving, the writing, not only did it not erode away, uh, it actually became bigger and clearer over time as the turtle grew. Now this gave Chang Jie an idea, you know, a problem that he has struggled with for years. Well, we know it's at least three years. And he ordered the people to uh, collect as many turtle shells as they can and bring them to him. He started carving all the characters that he created onto these shells. He strung these shells up on uh, hemp ropes and he showed them to Huang Ti. 
Huang Ti, of course, was greatly pleased by this, and he ordered these strong shells to be carefully stored and cared for. He praised Chang Jie greatly for this contribution and uh, rewarded him handsomely for, for, for his efforts. Well, hello. Hello. You want a reward as well? Now, these early Chinese characters or proto writings were carved into a turtle shells are now known as uh, oracle bone scripts or jia gu wen. And uh, many of these shells, uh, albeit from a later time period, have been unearthed by archaeologists, uh, with the majority of them being found in the Inchi site, which is near uh, modern Anyang in uh, Henan province. But over time, with all the praises that he received and with all the rewards that was bestowed on him, um, Chang Jie got a bit big-headed and he got kind of arrogant and uh, he became pretty sloppy in his work in creating new characters for things. And when Huang Ti uh, found out about this, he was annoyed and worried. And so he went to the oldest and wisest of the elders in the settlement uh, to seek advice to figure out how he could change this and turn things around. So this elder thought for a while and he, he was like, nah, it's not a big issue, you know. He reassured Huang Ti that he would personally handle this uh, problem and give Huang Ti a sat satisfactory uh, answer. And so this elder attended uh, one of uh, Chang Jie's lectures where he was teaching the people about these words. And he sat quietly at the back of the, of the crowd. And when the attendees were dismissed, the elder stayed behind and still sitting there quietly without saying a word. And so Chang Jie, feeling curious, uh, decided to approach him and inquire if uh, there was a problem or question that he would like to ask. After being approached, uh, the elder told Chang Jie, Oh great Chang Jie, your characters are known by all men far and wide. Even women and children know how to write the characters that you created. But, I am an old man who has failing vision. Uh, may I humbly request that uh, you help me with some of the characters that I am confused about. Now, feeling a great sense of pride you know, in himself that uh, even an elder would be so humble before him, Chang Jie puffed himself up and uh, demanded that the elder you know, get on with it and be quick about his questions. So the old man, the elder, uh, asked his question. Oh, Chang Jie, your, your characters for horses, donkeys, and mules, they all have four legs. But why does the character you create for cows only has a tail and no legs? Now, Chang Jie immediately felt a sense of uh, an anxiousness and not a small measure of embarrassment because in his uh, callousness, he had mixed up the characters when, when he was creating the symbols for fishes and for cows. Uh, therefore, the character for fishes ended up with four legs and the one for cows ended up with just a tail. And without missing a beat, the elder just continued. Oh, Chang Jie, the character you created for heavy has symbols that represent a distance of a thousand li and it looks like it means going out to a distant place but you taught the people that it should be understood as being heavy. On the other hand, the character that you created to mean out, as in going out, has two mountains stacked on top of one another, which looks to my old frail eyes to be extremely heavy. But you taught the people that it should be understood as out. Now, these few characters had me confused for a very long time. And I humbly ask you, oh great Chang Jie, to explain them to me. Now, if Chang Jie was feeling no small measure of embarrassment before this, um, by the time the old man finished, it was as if a giant, great, huge bucket of embarrassment has been poured over his head. I mean, deep down in his heart, Chang Jie knew that these characters has been uh, standardized and popularized and spread among the people, and it was too late to change them even if he wanted to. So basically, just a moment of negligence and sloppiness has uh, resulted in grave consequences. And understanding his own mistakes and his own uh, folly, Chang Jie immediately prostrated himself before the old man and asked for forgiveness. Now, seeing that Chang Jie was uh, 
sincerely remorseful and was really, you know, trying to make things right, um, the elder uh, thus gave him uh, some advice. Oh, Chang Jie, you have indeed made great and momentous contributions to the people and you will undoubtedly be remembered for posterity. But you must remember to ever remain humble and never ever get big-headed and sloppy in your work. So the now humble Chang Jie took the elders uh, advice to heart and every character that he created from then on was uh, repeatedly checked and revised and he also asked the masses for their opinions before uh, settling on the final forms and to publish them to the public. Now Chang Jie's uh, invention of the first Chinese characters or the first uh, proto-writing uh, was a momentous event in the long journey and evolution of uh, Chinese culture and civilization. It brought the civil, uh, civilization into an age of using words to document uh, historical events and uh, preserve the stories of the struggles and the achievements of the people for all future generations. And not only that, the creation of writing itself, be it Chinese or any language, the creation of writing, having a form of written word, fundamentally change the way that humans um, understand the world, the way humans have thoughts, the way we think. And uh, it would be a great impact on the future development of uh, humanity at large. Now, if you like this story and this video, uh, it would really help me out a lot if you would throw me a like and share this video out to your friends. And um, yeah, we'll go on to the bonus fact section. Now, although in this story, we uh, attributed the invention of uh, writing uh, to Chang Jie, well, at least the writing of the early Chinese language, we know that the writing systems of the early Bronze Age were not a sudden invention that popped out of nowhere. Rather, they were developed. They were a development based on the earlier traditions of symbol system, which I believe what this uh, story was talking about, a kind of proto-writing which means that uh, it's a system that cannot be classified as proper writing but uh, have many characteristics of writing. And uh, they use uh, ideographic or early mnemonic symbols to uh, convey information. Now these uh, systems, they emerge in uh, early Neolithic periods and uh, as early as the 7th millennial BC or 7000 BC. Now in the context of this story uh, specifically, we know that in China, uh, we found the Jiahu symbols that were, that were carved on tortoise shells, like what the story said. They were found in 24 Neolithic uh, grave sites that was uh, excavated at uh, Jiahu in uh, Henan province in northern China. And the radiocarbon dating of these uh, artifacts uh, dated them to about 7000 BC. And uh, most archaeologists consider these uh, not really directly linked to the earliest true writings. Now, the earliest confirmed Chinese script or Chinese writing were the oracle bone scripts that were carved on tortoise shells or actually on bronze uh, vessels that were found on the, uh, in the Inchi sites, as I mentioned earlier. And these were from the Shang dynasty, which was much later in the timeline from the story that we are talking about. Now, the earliest of these uh, bone oracle scripts or Jia Gu Wen were actually dated to about 1200 BC, which would put it roughly around the middle of the Shang Dynasty. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there have been uh, proto-writings being uh, discovered uh, in Jiahu, which dates uh, to about 6000 or 7000 BC. But whether or not these uh, carvings, these symbols can be considered a uh, proper writing, is uh, still highly debatable among the academics, uh, among uh, historians and archaeologists. Now, at Ta Mai Ti, at the Ningxia Hui Autonomous Region, um, 3,172 cliff carvings have been um, found and they were dated to about 6,000 to 5,000 BC. Now, these wall carvings or characters are said to be very similar or coincides with the very earliest uh, confirmed Chinese uh, written characters. And if this claim is verified, then it will put uh, the discovery of Chinese written language 
about 2,000 years earlier than the cuneiform writings of the Mesopotamian culture. This would really change, um, in a way, change history as we know it. Now, if you'd like to support my work or just connect with me on other social media platforms, you can find all the links down in the description box below and most probably it will be appearing here. Yeah. If you like uh, this video and stories and content like this in general, uh, remember to hit the like and subscribe and um, share it with your friends. I mean, share the videos out far and wide. It would really help me and help the channel out a lot. I guess uh, that's it for today. If you have any feedback and if you have anything you'd like to say to me, just leave it down in the comment section. I definitely look at them and I'll definitely get back to you. So I'll see you soon in the next episode.